1962 Pontiac Catalina Super Duty. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies fans. Are you ready for another great unboxing? Well, today we're going to slip back to 1962 and check out this great AMT Ertl 1962 Pontiac Catalina 421 Super Duty. Now, Father's Day is coming up pretty soon. So when this video releases, I think you'll have two more days before Father's Day. And what better thing can you do than come on down to Monster Hobbies with your dad and check out all our great model kits, including model car kits. This one, of course, is out of my own collection, so it won't be here on our shelves. <laughs> but anyway, we can go down and review it. But before we do that, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Hey, help me get this great model kit video up to 100 likes so that it'll surface up in the Google search engines whenever anybody wants to check out the 1961 Pontiac Catalina 421 Super Duty. So without further ado, let's go down and check the plastic on this great kit. And now we set the clock all the way back to 1962 and we take a look at the amazing 1962 Pontiac Catalina 421 Super Duty. Now back in the day, there was a great big muscle car craze going on and this is one of those special duties, super duties, that have great muscle car bits to it. So. We're going to look at the side of the box here. As you can see, they've painted one of these things in a maroon color. And there's, of course, that great Pontiac engine. Now, this was made in 1998 by the Ertl Company. And uh, very simplistic box, but this is one of those great model kits. It has over 100 parts, built by a really good team at the time. The side of the box, of course, looks at the top. There's the back three quarters of that maroon version of the car. And of course the phone number for if you're missing parts and a barcode so you know that this is a post whatever year. Now this of course is the original run of this kit and I know that round two has re-released it a couple of times. Anyway let's pull the lid off and just take a quick look at the instructions. Now we're gonna take a look at the plastic pieces in a moment, but first I'll move those out of the way so we can see our instructions and let's zoom this camera back, way back to see the box that I just moved. Okay. <laughs> All right, 62 Pontiac Catalina 421 Super Duty. Now they don't give you a write up here, they just tell you about the important things about building a model, but down below here is the paint chart and the call out letters. So now let's open up our instructions here. Oh, and look, I marked all the colors. So black, sky blue, should be Pontiac engine blue, but whatever. Okay, so as you can tell, the engine is quite detailed, a multi-piece kit. Um, oh, and they give you the stock colors here. Ensign blue. Um, and the interior, dark blue, medium blue, and light blue. Okay, anyway. So you get a two-barrel carburetor, or sorry, two four-barrel carburetor intake manifold. Your valve covers with, of course, valves in them. Oh, the cylinder head. <laughs> with valves up top, your valve covers. Oh, it must have been a long night last night. Anyway. So there's our motor, and as you can tell, this thing is factory stock, but it's factory performance. Of course, you got your headers there, and your dual four-barrel carburetors, all this neat stuff. Very cool-looking kit engine. So now we get into our interior panels, and as you can see, it's very basic in here. Very simple for light weight when you're racing this Super Duty. Of course, they did need some upholstery and interior in here. Anyway, so now as you can tell this is more modern kit. It has a separate side panels which are amazing for detail and of course it all fits together. There is no tub like in these model kits made in the 70s where the interior is one big box. Anyway we get into our frame and undercarriage. 
And again, you got a separate frame going on to the chassis there and your engine radiator in two separate pieces, the shroud and the radiator itself. And of course you get your dual exhaust pipes. Then we get into the suspension components. You got your nice differential here with separate molded coil springs, shock absorbers, and spindles in the front. And if you are very good, you can actually cut off the steering linkage and make little pins off the side here and connect it. Just Google up how to make model kits steer. Should be some articles out there somewhere. Then of course we've got our wheels. Now, the car actually came with Goodyear slicks off the back and Firestone skinnies in the front, but if you wanted to build this more stock, you could try to find in your parts box some of these Firestone skinnies, put them on the back. But anyway, so there's our glass going in and the rear tail lights, and it does have a dome light that would be very nice to paint in there. And of course our hood has optional hood hinges so you could display this with the hood up and very neat stuff interesting that they're showing you the firewall again oh because that's where the hood hinges glue i get it okay and then there's our rear bumper and stuff going on so now without further ado let's dissect the parts and see more closely what's in the box so to begin with, let's take a look at our Pontiac car body here. As you can see, this is quite a cool little molding. One thing they tried to do back in the 60s is make the roof look like it was a convertible by adding in these kind of ribs in here. So they, they would nickname this as a hard top convertible, even though the hard top never really went into the convertible, unlike the retractable Fords or whatnot of the 50s. But uh, anyway, that's sort of the style. So you can see some nice detail in here, the silver stripes going along <clears throat> into our molding there. You can see they did a nice job of detailing this. You can see the Pontiac name across the back in here. Whoops, right there. And of course, the mounts for where the fenders or bumpers and license plates go. There is a gas filler cap right there. Got the door hin handles are molded on and then of course we've got our hood here and if you turn the hood over you can see the rib detail underneath and the mounting location holes for the springs you've got your windshield wipers there and your vents for the wipers so it was quite a good kit next we take a look at the chassis here and as you can see, there's a lot of little holes in there. This is for mounting the frame and exhaust pipes and suspension onto. Quite a lot of nice detail, as you can see there. And there's a gas can is molded on, the gas tank, I mean. And as we turn it over here, you can see the nice carpet detail molded in with our um, <clears throat> floor mat. These little pipes go around here, that's where the seats locate. And then on our fender skirts here, or our, our wheel wells, whatever, there's the uh, electric wires and stuff. So really nice detail work. And next up we have this nice perimeter frame, which has a lot of good molding details very fine you don't really see any flash on this kit at all although it does have the injection buttons up there which will have to be taken out with your number 16 hobby blade now let's see how this thing attaches to the undercarriage so there's the chassis there and as you can tell it is a pretty nice fit once you get it together, you can't see the uh, holes that are underneath. So again, very, very good work from AMT. So next up, we have the rear exhaust. This is from the manifold. Oh no, that is the rear exhaust. So your muffler is going to go off of here. And then we've got the battery here. Uh, 
looks like power steering pump or brakes or something and here's the steering column here now if we bring up the battery you can see the nice detail on there it's got the top as well as the battery clamps oops with the wires running down the sides and next up we have some more undercarriage detail this is of course the front a arms from underneath the bottom a arms i guess then we have our valve covers the drive shaft the rear differential and the rear differential front cover if we turn it around you can see it's got some very nice ribs on it right in there next up we have our interior components which are molded flat here so we've got our left and right hand side interiors and this rear bench seat with some nice sort of factory tuck and roll in there the Pontiac emblems in the centers of the seats and here of course because this is flat the hand cranks and door uh, pulls the door pulls look very nicely detailed and over here we have these shock absorbers with the funny little spring ends on them so now looking a little more closely at these interior panels you can see the high level of detail that they have very nice the uh, front vents of course and all the uh, tuck and roll from the factory next up we have the second part of the exhaust pipes with the mufflers off the back and this would come up into the engine at the headers in fact it even looks like part of a header <laughs> anyway so here's some of the suspension components for the rear axle your coil springs there's your little um, spindles for the front wheels I'm not sure what part number 30 and 29 are without looking at them but now if we move this up closer You can see that the uh, coil springs actually have the coils to them. Uh, I don't know, camera's having some problems adjusting. Anyway, so that's those components right there. Next up, we've got all the minor details here. So there's our dashboard with the four pedals. So you get the parking brake, the brake, or the clutch, the brake and the gas pedal so obviously a standard shift car here we've got our radiator and our radiator shroud left and right hand sides of our Pontiac 421 engine of course the intake manifold with the two four barrels the customized exhaust headers or they are factory stock but and then we have our um, cylinder heads with the rockers on the top there's our two four barrel carburetors. Those are two little button things. A distributor, our fan belts, our fan, starter motor, and some of the other under hood parts. There's the oil pan, the intakes for, the, or the uh, fuel lines for the carburetors, which are quite rare. You don't usually see fuel lines in model kits. And our timing chain cover. And here we have two of the radiator hoses, the seat back and the front seat or the back of the seat whatever <laughs> some of the coil springs for the sh front end plus our upper a arms here's the rear wheels with the brake drum pattern in them drum brakes and of course the four little things that go in here the retainer clips and now we have the dashboard right here and the two springs for the hood to keep them up and if we look at our dashboard you can see all the nice detail of the uh, windshield washer or wiper motors and our wires going everywhere that's to the heater motor so very nice stuff so what I've done here is I've taken the wheels and I've actually put them into the tires this time around so we have two different sets of tires the top two are the front wheels and you can tell because the wheel will have this little nut right in the center and that's for your um, bearings on your front wheels these are the old Firestones 
with the pie plate type and um, tread side treads on them. <laughs> the tread pattern itself is just some straight lines, so nothing too spectacular. And on the bottom here, with a little cross piece in the center, uh, that's for your rear differential. These are your Goodyear um, Blue Streak Drag Slicks. And as you can tell, they are quite wider than the front tires. Let's see if I can line that up. They're almost half the width. And uh, these Goodyears have also been around in the AMT lineup for a very, very long time. So again, there's your front wheels here and your rear wheels there. And now we have our chrome parts tree. And there is some nice detail here. There's a Pontiac emblem right in the grille. Uh, here's the rear bumper. All right, sorry, this is the front bumper. It's got the parking lights in there. There's the rear bumper as well. And the red tail lights are separate. You've got the horn ring on your steering wheel. Your rear view mirror, windshield wipers. Oh no, sorry, those are uh, trim pieces. Your gear shift lever and the hubcaps, and I do believe these are some Lucas lights. Oh no, those are the uh, air cleaners for your carburetors. <laughs> so again, if we move this up, you can see the nice attention to detail that they've put into this with the grills. A little bit of uh, black wash would be nice in there, as well as the grills and those components there. There are a lot of attachment points on these hubcaps. So you're going to need some chrome paint once you clip these off and sand them just to cover up where the uh, missing chrome is. And next we have our clear components. We have red tail lights. They give you four in case you lose some along the way. Uh, there's a crystal clear glass steering wheel which was popular in the 60s. So what you do is you actually paint the arms here but leave the rest clear. Then we've got our quad headlights and here we also have some Lucas lights. Then our rear window and our front window and it is a bit countersunk in here where it's going to push through the body. So that gives you a flush mount on your glass. Finally we have this decal sheet with Michigan 1962-62 cat and in case you're wondering what this is, it's an actual decal for under the hood that goes where the fan is on the radiator so that you would know there was a fan there and wouldn't put your hand in and get it hit with the fan blades. And that concludes our review of the AMT Ertl 1962 Pontiac Catalina 421 Super Duty. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great review of my 1962 Pontiac Catalina 421 Super Duty. Wasn't that a great kit and a very good uh, filler year car for your collection? I know there's not too many in 1961-62, but uh, do not worry, there is this Pontiac. <laughs> okay, so next week we are going to be looking at the sister car to this one which is, of course, the 1962 Pontiac Catalina Custom version. So that'll be a real cool one to check out. And while you're doing the things, don't forget again to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family so that many more people can see this great model kit. And don't forget to click that notification bell so that when I do next week's model, you will be the first to see it. Now let's try to get this video up to 100 likes and until next time, Happy Father's Day!